the sounds of the city blend with the sounds of soul. The artist is Kadir Nelson. You may not know who he is, but you'll find his work on the covers of magazines, albums, on posters, and postage stamps. Then there are the children's books, more than two dozen of them. The subjects may vary, but the theme is unmistakable. As a young kid, I didn't really see a lot of representations of African Americans. I felt like I had a self-appointed responsibility to tell that story, that children who would go to museums or art galleries or open their books and see images uh, that look like them and, and be proud of those images. Images like Shirley Chisholm, the first black woman elected to Congress, and baseball players from the Negro League, also civil rights activist Harriet Tubman. And then there is this portrait of Nelson Mandela, his fist raised in rebellion against apartheid. I like to choose subjects that are spiritually strong and internally strong uh, because that's how I want to see myself. So when he was commissioned to create the cover for the 90th anniversary of The New Yorker, Nelson took the publication's mascot, Eustace Tilly, and reimagined him as a contemporary African-American man, a modern-day aristocrat, swapping his old-school eyeglass for an iPhone. How old were you when you were drawing something like that? That looks like it was from high school. He says his parents always encouraged his talent, but the inspiration for the elongated form found in much of Nelson's early work actually came from a TV show. Nelson was a big fan of good times and those paintings in the opening and closing credits. They were the work of artist Ernie Barnes, but passed off on the show as the art of character J.J. Evans, played by Jimmy Walker. I was probably about five or six years old, and I can see um, an African-American artist on television who likes to draw and paint just like I do. Quiet scream, I would say. Quiet scream. I call it quiet scream because he's a quiet person. He's a gentle person, but his art is just screaming at you. It is begging you to go in and experience and feel. It was Alan who convinced Nelson to illustrate a children's book she wrote. Sassy is her name. <laughs> Ever since I was born and could see, everywhere I looked I saw dance. But and these aren't just the any children's books. The they are some of the few that depict children of color. When a child opens a book and sees a face that looks like them, they know that they matter. This is uh, called Stick Ballers. And it's Nelson's paintings may look historical. He's been compared to Norman Rockwell. But look closer and you'll realize he's painting something that rarely, if ever, happened. Black and white kids playing together in the 1930s. It's not likely that that could have happened, given the times. But it's great to imagine that it could have. This is what it could have looked like had things been different. There's nothing different Kadir Nelson can imagine doing with his life. Because when that music starts to play, and his subject, the late Muhammad Ali, comes into focus, his paintbrush starts to sing. I'm proud that I get to do what I love every day. To express myself creatively every day of the week. It's a pretty good gig. It's the best gig there is.